I, I don't feel a new soul. I think when I was younger, I always had a sense of uh, just feeling very different. I've always felt very different to other people. Not everybody, but because uh, there are some people um, like yourself talking to you, it's it just feels like a, a connection. Yeah. So that, but I'd, but I felt I did feel different, <laughs> and I can't really explain that. Um, I didn't really fit into the um, the what everybody else was doing. I thought a lot of people were quite ignorant, to be honest, when I was younger. No. Even as a child, I thought, well, you, but you're causing lots of pain and lots of you know the way that you're living your life is. I certainly don't want to be doing that when I'm older. Um, but similarly, I've made mistakes and I've, uh, uh, I'm still learning. I definitely think that the experience that I had when I was growing up, which, which was challenging and difficult, if I'd had an easier ride, I wouldn't have had the lessons that I've got. And I think some people who have more difficult, challenging upbringings end up uh, becoming um, quite uh, empowering leaders or authorities on on certain subjects uh, because they've lived it and, and they can understand they can that they've really been through and found something within themselves that brings integrity to when they're speaking and uh, authenticity. So do you uh, think, Daniel? Do you think you're still um, you're still integrating really what happened to you and trying to put put a framework around it or see how it's actually affected you in a positive way. Yes, uh, but I, I'm still living my life. That has fallen off the face of the earth like some people do that have... No, 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 no. I mean, I'm probably living with more... I'm probably a bit harsh on myself, really, because I'm, I'm, I'm living pretty purposefully, but not as much as... There's probably a bit of ego comparing going on of, oh, well, they're, they're doing that now and they're doing the other. And, you know, I'm not necessarily doing that. But I, I'm quite profoundly aware that this is something I'll be doing for the rest of my life. And I'm 36. A lot of my family have lived to, to a great age. Um, and it could be that some of the best work it might well be in my 50s, 60s and 70s. I think we're always integrating. We're, I mean, I've got friends my friend um, Liz phoned me up yesterday, he was 72. I just can have a great long conversation with her and it's wonderful. And she's still integrating. She's still working things through, even though she does great things for other people and um, she's very spiritual and uh, um, certainly living purposefully uh, and has, has a great deal of peace, even though she's hardly got anything. So I'm exactly where I need to be. <laughs> so it will, it will unfold as it is. Yes, yes, exactly, yeah. So out of all the common after effects that you've read about, you would, you would say the main thing for you is that you, you understand there is a higher kind of organizing force and, and you may have maybe you've doubted that in the past or, or you just... No, I'm, I'm very... I, I would say I'm very certain of that now. There's more sense to suffering than um, mine and the world's and other people's than I ever realized. And there's meaning, uh, and I believe in that. I, when, I, when I had this experience and I was in this meadow, uh, I got a glimpse of what people have called the Akashic Records. Okay. So I was able to experience that. I mean, I, I was aware of the Akashic Records before I had this experience. But when I went back and I was regressed, uh, I, I was able to, to go in and... and, and uh, research myself go in and just do it. and it was just this just complete font of all knowing all wisdom just oh divinely oh it's oh yeah that's what it is it's it's just perfect oh. that's never really left me so that 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 exactly ties in with the everything's in its own time and place it, it's all exactly where it needs to be backwards records isn't it it's got everything mm, totally yeah yeah there's there's a there's a more there's much more beingness with it uh, and i'm still learning the beingness with where i am and what i'm experiencing taking that beingness with me when i take a step forward uh, and taking that beingness with me uh, if i choose to look back but ultimately having the beingness in the now and being as present as possible and i think that the more individuals remain in in that sense of beingness as much as possible during this transition and during the whole of your life i mean if we're going to be uh, honest you then are sending out positive 
energy and, and peace and stillness. I've listened to something by Greg Braden recently. It was um, it was the Divine Matrix, and he was saying that it uh, that that the meditators have actually gone into um, into war zones and meditated. You know, uh, uh, and these experienced meditators, and they've had a change in consciousness, and there's been less conflict during that time. I remember asking my meditation teacher, um, you know, because I thought about becoming a monk at one point, and I, I didn't really know which religion to choose, and I just didn't want to choose a religion at all. And I remember saying, yeah, but you know, that, what's their point? What's the point of just meditating and doing that? And she said, ah. Uh, they give a lot of light to the world and they, they are exactly where they need to be. That's right. And some people will have a calling to do that and to affect the balance sort of in humanity. Yeah. It's so right a, now, um, Danny, your health has, has dramatically improved? It's dramatically improved. My uncle, uh, I, I, I feel all terrible every time I say this, but um, my, uh, my uncle is a professor of ophthalmology, so he's um, he's been around the world and lectured on eyes. So this this is one thing sort of I can talk about with my eyes and arthritis because I was diagnosed with iritis, of which because I couldn't see a future for myself. So when I've worked with EFT and other things about things that I haven't wanted to see either in my past or uh, being so traumatized about thinking about my future. Yeah. Um, and it being affected with the eyes. Well, he said, well, once you get iritis, you'll have that for the rest of your life. Oh. And I remember thinking, oh, my God. Oh, that, you know, and he, you must take steroids every time you every time it flares up because your uh, retina could detach um, from the back of the eye. You know, you could uh, have irreparable damage to your vision. Well, I had the last experience I had with with any iritis. Uh, and I had to take steroids each time this happened um, was 2008. And I did a I did a, a great big tapping session on it, um, and it's only ever half returned once. Uh, and I did about twenty minutes of EFT on it, and that was about two thousand and nine. Um, and it, it's never come back. And the the more that I'm more relaxed I am about seeing my future, um, right. more relaxed I am um, about being in the now and being in my body, then it makes sense that you wouldn't have iritis. Totally. Um, totally. So and the same with the. Um, arthritis and um, a lot of that uh, cleared up i had such chronic uh, me uh, it was um it was, it was terrible i'd go to the gym i exercise i'm pretty physically fit I'm significantly better in health and i help other people as well sort of that's what my coaching does i help others um, so Daniel, let me ask you this one um I and mean, maybe i've already asked it in a different sort of way but i'll just see whether it makes sense to you would you say that you are Actually, I, I I don't know how to answer it. I think a lot of it uh, I I can't necessarily answer with words. Okay. And s sometimes I try and s speak this stuff, and um, y it's um, limiting, isn't it? It is limiting because the experience that I had wasn't wasn't done with what we you know how we communicate. Uh. Um, it was communicated in in such a such an abundance. Um, that it's for almost like a, a, a primitive minds, a way of and our, our, our beliefs as well sort of can be so um, structured and um, you know well that can't be real and that that's not right and it was it's just boof. Yeah, the, the more you the more you learn about your beliefs, the more you realize how how uh, kind of terrible they are actually having them. If we could just believe nothing, we could have. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But if you believe nothing, you might never be able to open a door because you, you forget how, how to believe that you could actually open the door. They serve purpose. The ones that are of use will, will still be of use and the ones that aren't will fade. I've got a sense of the unity of humankind is the, the awakening to what's this all about? There'll be a catalyst where, where a lot of people will wake up, I believe, and question, when am I ever going to get this sense of peace or happiness yeah. that... I think that my actions are going to create the philosophy really of the ego with the enneotypes is, is always in a state of wanting as well as actions and everything else. So it's, there's always this wanting 
uh, and un- unsatisfactory with the now. And so, uh, as Eckhart Tolle is always talking about the now, and it's um, so there's all this state of wanting. And so, when I get, then I'll be. But it's the carrot on the end of the stick that we, you know, never really get. The ego never really gets. It's never happy. It's never satisfied. Uh, the whole postponing of happiness, as I call it. Yeah, I need something else. There's something else I need to get to 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 where I get to be happy. So it's a reining in uh, and reversing of that. It's the, it's reversal of that paradigm. It goes hand in hand with the saying, it's not about getting what you want. It's about wanting what you have. But how could you want illness? How could you want losing your job? How could you want very little money in your account? But if you're dissatisfied with where you are, then and you think that you need to get to a future place in order to have it, you're not working with the synchronicity because you're not acknowledging that any of it had any purpose. Yes. And it's accepting that situation and being with it, even if you're ill, being with that illness, being okay with it as much as you can. I believe, this is what I was communicated and certainly what I believe as well, I think that is the, the, the waking up of consciousness, of um, uh, the awareness of actually my actions are causing more pain to me and the rest of the world so if i change my actions am i going to experience a sense of peace and will that have a vibration and affect others well yes it most certainly will Definitely. it only takes uh, i love the hundredth monkey syndrome so it only takes uh, you know i think it's one percent is it even less than that square root of the population for that to have a change within consciousness Facebook is one of those ways of meeting up with all the other like minds. It's amazing that, uh, you know, you all, all the, the, the people that uh, that come on and you'd posted something and it was, I'd only just posted something four days before by Dr. Pim Van Lommel. Uh, I love listening to him talk. The whole near-death experience phenomena is, is something that profoundly interests me. So this is a, this is a great subject. And I wasn't aware that there were 17. Did you say there were 17 different types of... Yeah, apparently there's 14 to 15. I 14 to 15. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I'm going to find out on the next interview with the lady I've been doing, but she said there was 14 or 15 types of, uh, they've researched apparently 14 or 15 experiences that will uh, instigate a near-death experience after effects. Mm. So the common after effects of a near-death experience, you know them probably better than I do, but it's just you know, knowing that there's a, an organizing force, a source, or a, a god, um, not just question, not thinking maybe there might be, but knowing there's an afterlife. Mm. Um, oftentimes there's uh, an increase of synchronistic events that happen for you. Like I think that our event was already synchronistic that you saw my post and, mm. and that I just read about long. Yeah, you've got about three and a half thousand friends and I've got two and a half thousand. Why, why would yours come up? I don't, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen you before. I don't remember ever seeing you either. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, like. You know, these, all these sorts of things, it's just, Apparently some of them are, uh, they can be something like a shamanic initiation, they could be a spiritual experience like you had on, on that hill when you were 12. Mm. Um, so there's lots of different experiences. They can also be fearful experiences, for example, being um, raped or abused or beaten. Um, it's not always about death, it's about strong, really intense emotion. Uh, mm. They can stimulate, and interestingly enough, the woman I was uh, speaking to, her name is uh, Barbara Whitfield. Mm-hmm. She, re- she was a researcher with Grayson, and she also, who's at the University of uh, Virginia, he was the boss of Raymond Moody, apparently. And uh, she's saying that they also researched um, why, why is it that one in five people that die, that only one in five people have an NDE and the other 80% don't. She believes that they, and their research shows that they, they believe that they, that probably everybody has it, but there's only 20% that are actually open to recalling uh, and recognizing the experience, which is quite fascinating. So she's saying that these 20% of the people who, who have the experience and can come back and tell about it, mm. oftentimes apparently have had something, you know, there's, there's somehow a correlation between um, actually abuse as a child. Mm. It's something to do with having a previous out-of-body experience they're starting to wonder about and or, or did research mm. um, that somebody who'd been in a violent background, for example, might be more apt to having a near-death experience. 